Rick Thomas, who's a, a an alum of Second City and a director and teacher, talks about the need to fall into the crack in the game. So what is it? When you see that mistake, can you seize upon it? And we know from the history of various innovations like um, Post-its, like Slinkies, these things were all mistakes. They didn't start out being the thing that the person was trying to make. And you just discover at a certain point that you pivot. I guess Slack, right, is one of the most amazing things, which is like, that is a, you know what Slack is? Is a failed product. <laughs> It was a failed product, yep. and uh, and now you know it's it, it's an amazing product. Um, but you, it, that took a reframe, and and this is the thing. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly wish that when I was a younger person working, you know, but both in sort of my creative brain and my business brain, that I understood this idea of reframing. Uh, that that it is a what a superpower that is the ability to take something that is like. Oh, this is the worst thing possible. What can I do with it? How do I have agency? Uh, my friend Scott Barry Kaufman introduced me to this concept of post-traumatic growth. So the idea that, look, we all go through incredible trauma and grief and problems, divorces, deaths, all those things. It's inevitable. But what if you take it in those moments and, and, and you look at like post-traumatic growth, you're like, how can I grow out of this thing? How can I take this seemingly net negative and make it inform something positive in my life? When COVID hit, this was this moment for Second City. And this was a very turbulent time here. We, we went through a sale, so a longtime owner sold the place. We were getting just terrible press because any institution that had been around for 60 years was facing the fact that they're largely white owners and operators maybe didn't behave the best. We, we all got that. And I remember my friend who ran exec ed at an Ivy League school uh, was now at a major soft drink company. I'll figure out, you can figure out which one it was. But she was like, hey, do you have any stuff that you could deliver on Zoom around resilience? Because my people are hurting. And my wife, Anne, who has worked at Second City two years longer than I have, and she's a longtime educator and director here, I yelled downstairs. I'm like, what do you got? Resilience exercise. Well, we'll work on Zoom. And she gave me one. This one is really good. I think your, your folks could use this very easily. It's not complicated. It's called Wish. And what you do is you have everyone get a piece of paper and make three columns. In the first column, you write down a wish that you have that you're not going to get granted anytime soon. So at that point, it was like, I want to swim in salt water. I live in, I live in Chicago. That ain't happening. Uh, and in the second column, you write down the emotion you think you'd feel if you got that wish. And I wrote, like, refreshed. And in the final column, you write down something you could do right now to experience that emotion. So if I wanted to be refreshed, I could put some water in my face. I could go for a run. I could work out. And the idea is like, we don't control what's happening to us, all the elements of, of a situation in the room. What we do control is our emotional response to it. That's a reframe. That is a crucial way that you can manage through the inevitable ups and downs that are going to take you through your day, through your career, through your life. You have the ability to see this thing in the way that you want to see it. It's not going to change it. It's not going to improve. It's not going to make things better. But it will give you the opportunity to have some measure of control in, in the world that you'd live in. 